Happy Monday, everyone. This is Martha with Nature Niche. And this week, I want to talk to you um, about some great pollinator plants, uh, mountain mint in general. And I'm going to show you both common and slender mountain mint in this video. Um, so common is Pinknanthemum virginianum. And slender mountain mint is Pinknanthemum um, tenuifolium. So those are our two most common species of mountain mint in Michigan. There are six total. Um, one, hoary, is not native to Michigan. Uh, two are state-threatened, that's broad-leaved and hairy mountain mint. And one is special concern, um, that's world mountain mint. So uh, common and slender are by far the, the, the two most likely species you'll come across. Um, they are perennials. Common mountain mint can be found in fens and prairies, uh, mesic to um, moist or wet prairies, marshes, sedge meadows, tamarack swamps, um, in swales and depressions like old lake beds, fields, sandy banks, and rarely you can find them in forested areas. Um, this is my friend Rita and her dogs uh, scouting out a common mountain mint population in a wet prairie here in Midland. Slender mountain mint habitat um, is similar. This species can be more local. Um, here it is out at the Eagle Ridge nature area, also in Midland, Michigan. Um, it likes sandy fields, moist meadows, grassy areas, wet to slightly dry prairies. Um, it can be along river banks and also in openings in woodlands. Um, as far as horticulture goes, both species are easy to grow and are found um, in, in like full sun to part shade conditions. Um, and both are very adaptable to a range of soil conditions and textures, loam, sand, clay, gravel um, are all okay. And um, common tends to be in average to mesic um, and wet conditions. Slender likes um, mesic to dry mesic conditions. Uh, both will, um, in severe drought, their leaves will yellow and uh, may, may, they may lose their lower leaves. So, but um, in, in general conditions, uh, they're both very happy to grow and they're not as susceptible to foliar diseases as other things in the mint family like um, Monarda or bee balm. Um, but the, the stressed out plants may succumb to, to rust if there is prolonged drought or other uh, stressful factors. As far as identification goes, both plants get about two to four feet tall, usually topping out around three feet and they have branched stems that make them look uh, bushy. Uh, even though it is an herbaceous plant and dies back to the ground every year, it is not woody. They have square stems and opposite leaves, very characteristic of things in the mint family. Um, common has uh, white hairs along the ridges of that square stem and um, Rarely there are a few scattered hairs on the, the sides of the stem, whereas slender has a hairless stem, so no, no hairs on the um, corners of the stem. They both have sessile opposite lance-shaped leaves with smooth margins, but uh, common um, tend to be wider and uh, they get about two and a half inches long by about a quarter up to a half inch wide. Um, and it has a very strong minty scent when crushed. Um, and the leaves can be variable size in, in shape and uh, the amount of pubescence or hairiness. And that width may overlap with, with um, how narrow slender mountain mint gets. Slender Mountain Mint has leaves that can get up to three inches long. They're usually only about a quarter inch across. They are hairless um, and only have a very faint odor. And if you like bite into them, a little bit stronger minty taste, but not as much as the common Mountain Mint. 
So you can see here how much more slender uh, or narrow those leaves are on slender mountain mint versus the common mountain mint I was showing you. Both species have flat top clusters of small white flowers at the end of the stems and the heads are composed of small tubular white flowers um, that often have purple dots and are two-lipped and about a quarter to an eighth of an inch long. Uh, common mountain mint flowers uh, mid to late summer, July um, into September. Um, and slender mountain mint tends to be a little bit early, more like early to midsummer. And they flower for a month or a month and a half, uh, which is nice for pollinator support. Um, there's no real floral scent, but the flowers do provide lots of nectar. Um, they have hairless tiny seeds that are, are uh, wind dispersed to some degree. Um, and common mountain mint plants have a fibrous root system with rhizomes, while slender mountain mint uh, tends to have more of a tap root, um, also with rhizomes. So both plants will spread vegetatively short distances by rhizomes, and that helps them form small clumps of plants. And those you can divide up. If it gets too aggressive in your planting, you can divide up um, in the spring and, and move them around or thin them out. As far as faunal associations go, both species of mountain mints make great pollinator plants. The nectar of the flowers um, will attract all sorts of uh, long and short tongue bees, wasps, flies, uh, small butterflies like crescents, um, also the little skippers, moths, um, and beetles. And the minty taste tends to repel mammalian herbivores like white-tailed deer and eastern cottontail rabbits. Um, voles and, and um, woodchucks, and uh, as well as the leaf chewing insects. So the foliage may even contain an antibacterial substances that uh, may disrupt uh, digestive process of herbivores. That's uh, part of the thought process behind uh, the lack of herbivory on this plant. Um, they are great for um, early to late summer pollinator support. And that long bloom period um, is really a great thing to have in your pollinator plantings. And as far as, you know, really using them in the landscape, they make um, excellent plants for rain gardens, uh, shoreline plantings, other moist places like bioswales and little depressions. You may be trying to vegetate um, near your downspouts or something like that. Uh, just because they can tolerate moist soils, not standing water, but moist soils. Um, and they, um, they clump, and so they're nice for tucking in between other perennial species, and they're easy to divide and thin out if you need to. Um, and the leaves can be used uh, to make tea, they can be dried out um, and used in savory dishes like oregano is. Um, they were also used for um, tinctures and salves and historically were used to treat toothaches. Their Latin name, the genus Pinknanthemum, means um, densely packed flowers. And this, uh, these species definitely will will provide uh, plenty of flowers to help support pollinator species. So I wanted to share these uh, mountain mints with you and they are quite the little um, pollinator powerhouse plants and thought you might want to consider using them um, in your own native plantings. Take care and have a good week.